two years ago, I made a video about getting rid of the wasted space in a laptop by throwing the DVD drive across the room. In its place is a hard drive caddy to fit another 2.5 inch drive for something more useful, like an SSD. But that video had flaws and missing information that I needed to address in the comments section and the description. Things like the correct thickness for the caddy, SATA interface in the optical drive being SATA 2, and the lack of better instructions in the cloning process. So, for my 10,000 subscriber special, I am redoing this entire guide from start to finish. In today's video, I'm going to focus on the hardware bit. The next video would be the cloning process because this isn't like a RAM upgrade where you could just put it in and you're good to go. So, why a dual drive setup? Why not just get one big SSD? Well, one big SSD, like a terabyte around that, is still quite expensive, but not as bad as five years ago. As of January 2019, a one terabyte, 2.5 inch SSD will set you back 130 US dollars at the low end. Five years ago, that is how much a 240 gig SSD would cost. Meanwhile, this 120 gigabyte Western Digital Green costed me just 27 bucks. A 240 gig is a better value though, at $40 or less. Does your laptop have an M.2 slot? If yes, this video is not for you. Today, the vast majority of laptops in the market do have an M.2 slot where you could just get, a, get an M.2 SSD, open the access panel or the entire bottom of the laptop, plug the SSD in, screw it in, and close the laptop, done. You can now begin cloning. Do you have an MSATA slot? The thing is, known brand MSATA SSDs are now surprisingly rare. And if you do find one, it's more expensive than its 2.5 inch or M.2 counterpart. At this point, you're better off spending the extra for the caddy and then getting a 2.5 inch SSD. So keep watching. Do you have an optical drive? You know, be it like DVD or Blu-ray? We need to know how thick it is, what connector it uses, and is it using a standard form factor or is it using a proprietary one? First, remove the screw that secures the optical drive. This could be accessed externally or you may need to open your laptop's access panel so you can access it internally. Or you may have to take the entire bottom of your laptop off. The last one though, you may need to use a service manual. With the screw removed, push or pull the optical drive out and away. If it's using this connector, your laptop may be uh, just too old and it may not make financial and practical sense to do any more upgrades on such an old machine. If it's using this connector, you're good. If it's using anything else, then you are in proprietary land. You will need a 2.5 inch hard drive caddy specific to your laptop brand and model. For those with standard slim SATA optical drives, take a ruler, take a ruler and then measure its thickness as there are several thickness standards, seven millimeter, 9.5 millimeter and 12.7 millimeter, plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Now you know what caddy to get, you can go ahead and buy one. Also, go ahead and buy the 2.5 inch SATA SSD you would prefer.
We'll be right back after the break. Now, turn on the computer and see that it boots up as slow as before. At least at this point, we are sure that the hard drive is being detected properly in the caddy. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. Now at this point, your computer is supposed to boot up normally from the slow hard drive now in the caddy. But in the case of this Lenovo laptop, it fails to do so. Picking the boot device reveals that the hard drive in the caddy isn't even being detected in the boot menu. So I tried reattaching everything in the caddy, didn't work. I flicked a tiny switch in the caddy, did nothing. Then I thought I killed a perfectly functional hard drive. So I swapped the two drives so that the hard drive is back in the 2.5 inch bay and the SSD is back in the caddy. It booted. So the caddy is effective, right? Nope. The blank SSD is being detected fine in Disk Manager. So has this been the case ever since? Was my old video from two years ago better where I have the SSD in the caddy while the hard drive stays in the 2.5 inch bay? I did an experiment where I placed the caddy with the hard disk drive from the Lenovo and the blank SSD in the 2.5 inch bay into my daily driver Asus laptop. Guess what? It worked. So I guess your mileage may vary. Side note, you can also use a SATA to USB 3 adapter to plug the SSD in, then clone it, then do follow this guide. Why do I need to have the SSD here while the hard disk drive is in the caddy here? Well, I later learned that while the SATA interface in the 2.5 inch bay over here is SATA 3, which tops out at 600 megabytes per second, the slim SATA connector in the optical drive bay runs at SATA 2 sometimes at 250 megabytes per second. Most hard disk drives barely saturate SATA 2 or heck even SATA 1, but SSDs, even entry level ones like these, will saturate SATA 3. This procedure isn't as simple as just popping in more RAM. It's a little more involved. In my next video, we will be cloning the current operating system installed on the hard disk drive, and then we're gonna clone it to the SSD. But if you feel like just doing a clean install of Windows, then go right ahead. Just remember to install it on the SSD, of course, and back up your data. Anyway, likers gonna like, haters gonna hate, subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and thank you for 10,000 subs. When the first version of this tutorial came out, I only had like 35 subs. <laughs> yep, a long way indeed.